Hello everybody, and welcome back to Space Engine. Picking up where we left off. I don't actually know where we are, but it doesn't matter. Alright. Let's go to this place, because I was asked to go here. So I'm going to. Apparently the view is nice. And I like nice views. Uh, it's kind of a Mars feel to it. Well, I guess, yeah, uh, Faria. Is that reference to iron? Perhaps. Actually, this will let us know. Um, right. Physical. And, uh, it has a metallic core. Good to know. Um, okay, a bit of a water ice envelope. No helium, no hydrogen. A silicate mantle. No carbon mantle. Interesting, interesting atmosphere. We, we got one on here. Um, pressure thicker than ours. Mostly nitrogen, some oxygen. Oh, there's life here, I guess that kind of makes sense. <laughs> Water vapor, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, neon, and carbon monoxide. Hydrosphere, interesting. Uh, bottom composition, rock density, composition, H2O. So it's just mostly, it's just water. Excellent, excellent. Uh, well, let's take a look, shall we? That's a nice companion there. I like that. Um, is, it, is it, okay, is this a moon of that planet? Sure looks that way. Let's land and take a look, because why not? Ah, my throat's a little sore. I think I have a cold or something. Everyone else here has a cold, so it makes sense. And the game is frozen. That's nice. It'll it'll be back. Just like that. Um Alright. Where's our little companion uh planet companion? Where did I land in relation to it? Oh, over there. on topography. Now I'm getting lace vibes like from Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> oh, I'm so looking forward to the sequel. Better be good. Um, yeah. Makes me feel warm. Not really in a good way. Just like desert warm. Okay, I don't need any of this. Just cruising around. Well, let's uh, let's check out its planet. Very interesting color. I'm gonna presume that's green around the edge. Looks green to me. Uh, what is the nature of this system? Oh, uh, what do its friends look like? Hot Neptune. Arid, arid terra. Ooh, a torrid, arid terra. That's quite the uh, collection of words. Basically, an incredibly hot, arid, rocky planet. Sounds like Arizona. Warming. Oh, a warm mini Neptune. Ah. And temperate sub Neptune. Cool, arid aquaria. That sounds like fun. Oh, man, space engines really wreaking havoc on my uh, dyslexia today. Ah, info, hydrosphere. Alright, so I can't click on the hydrosphere, oh, it doesn't have one, okay. Um, class, cool, arid, aquaria. Nice, what's the atmosphere looking like? Nitrogen. My cat's just walked in. What do you think, Jim? What are you looking at? Okay. He sees something he likes. Don't know what it is, though. It has rings. Very diffuse rings. Kind of a pancake ring kind of situation going on there. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Actually. Ooh, a cool mini Jupiter. That's a good band name. Actually, it's not. Don't use that. Uh, 
has some act well, actually are those little storms or those shadows? I think those are shadows. Oh, actually they might be storms. Oh yeah, no, they're storms. That's a storm. Huh. Good stuff. Oh, what, what happened? Hmm, he's very close in. Oh, it's a red dwarf, that's why. Okay. Yeah, red dwarfs tend to have planets. Um, well, at least... They don't tend to, but um, frequently we, f you know, we find planets that are close to red dwarfs. Well, at least a lot of the uh, terrestrial ones, like the, the Earth-like ones, are always pretty close in because it's quote-unquote habitable zone is pretty close in. Although I have some questions about the habitability of uh, planets around red dwarfs because they have to be pretty damn close to them and they're pretty variable. Like all it takes is one flare and boom, that plant's sterilized. Nobody likes that. Anyways, let's carry on. There was another place to go to, but apparently it was similar to that, and I don't want to have to copy and paste that again. And I, I like to, I, I like to not edit these as best I can because then I, I don't, um it reduces compression artifacts. Well, because YouTube compresses everything, so if, it, if there's even small compression, YouTube makes it a lot worse. I try to uh, upload the raw files. So, yeah, and I was gonna write it down, but it was a very long and complex thing. So it's like, uh, I'm gonna be lazy this one time and not do it. A diffuse nebula. It certainly is a diffuse nebula. It did not uh, skimp out. It delivered exactly what it promised. Let's see what's in the center. Just stuff. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Let's carry on. What's new in the world? Um, SpaceX's Starship is getting its, like the like the uh, the first orbital ones, getting its wings put on. That's kind of cool. I still want to get mad at the name Starship, but then I remember Starfighter isn't a Starfighter and Starliner isn't a Starliner, so it's like okay, it's just a name. <clears throat> but I still like when Elon Musk made the comment where it's like you know they could go interstellar eventually, and it's like yeah, I'm sure it could. And by sure, I mean no. <laughs> like, the amount of modification you need to do one of those to make an interstellar, it would be a completely different vehicle. Like, I mean, you couldn't just stuff a, uh, a fusion engine into into a star sh into the, the starship and have it, you know, function well enough to go interstellar. Uh, or you couldn't stuff an antimatter engine into it and have it work and look the same. Like, you could probably use the passenger compartment of it and the architecture for it, but an interstellar version would be a completely different ship. It would be a completely different vehicle. So, I'm sorry, Elon, but I just, I don't buy it. And one thing with interstellar stuff, especially with um, when you deal with uh, relativistic things, oh, look at that, subglacial is um, the mass to fuel ratio is incredibly important. Like, for example, if you want to go, let's say, 50% the speed of light, one way, so fly by, no slowing down, then you need to have at least, like, what is it, like 60 or 50% of your ship's mass, just purely fuel. And this is for, like, an antimatter-type ship. If you want to slow down, you have to have more. There's one thing where it's like, if you want to have, if you want to go like 70 to, uh, to 99%, you need to have like 90% of your ship's mass is just fuel. Now, there are ways to cut into this. Like if you used a photon drive to accelerate leaving Earth and just to use the antimatter to slow down when you get there, you can cut your fuel uh, by half, like the requirements. Or actually, probably a quarter, actually, because if you, if you want to return, you have to still do that. But um, if you can refuel there at that destination, then you can cut it even further. But the whole mass to fuel ratio is very important. So I can't see uh, one of SpaceX's starships going interstellar unless they do it just like bullshit wise, uh, using a fusion drive. And well, even then, it would have to be bigger because it would need more fuel. 
Like, you can't just st stuff in a fusion drive with the same amount of fuel weight as a chemical engine and say it's going to f go twice at the speed of light and reach Alpha Centauri in 40 years. It's like, yeah, okay, sure. Um, it would need more fuel to do that. The engine would need to be bigger to do that. So at that point, you might as well just call it a just completely separate vehicle. Like, an interstellar starship to space exo starship would be the same as a like Sputnik to starship, like that kind of thing, or like a Mercury capsule to a future spacecraft going to Mars, like a big one. It's like <laughs> these things scale quite a bit. Like an, a crude interstellar starship would be quite large, out of necessity, mind you. Wow, let's go there. That just looks like a really nice place. Boom. Absolutely volcanic. Or molten, anyways. Let's go to the uh, the hotter one. Boom. Absolutely sublimation. This looks like a, li a nice, lovely place to hang out. Life forms. Didn't think so. Wouldn't think so. Jesus Christ, I'd feel bad for anything here. Uh, what's the atmospheric temperature like? Boo. Aw, oh, look at that. <laughs> 2200 degrees Celsius. That is my alarm going off that I forgot to turn off. That's unfortunate. Anyways. Damn. This is a nice place. I would live here. I mean, I wouldn't. I prefer cooler temperatures. Like, even on Earth, I like fall and winter more than I do summer. But, mm, that is just me. Uh, what's that? Oh, that's just another diffuse nebula. Hmm. Ooh, a blue main sequence. Let's go. Uh, oh yeah, there's also, there's another interstellar object on its way in. Uh, this time it's a comet, which is nice, because we can get more observations of it. Um, it's also, we discovered it on its way in versus out with the Muamua, so again, longer observation, which is always nice. It's going faster, which is interesting, than a Muamua did, so that's just kind of cool. Ooh. Uh, a hot Super Jupiter. That's a great word. Super Jupiter. Hmm. Come on, faster. Um, in my aerospace front, um, I'm going to start putting together my spacesuit, or the pressure suit's bladder eventually. I need to figure out how to do the, the seams correctly so I can seal them with the seam sealer. And I'm also going to have to add in a liner. I originally wasn't, I was going to use just the cooling garment as a liner, but it's like now nah, I'll add the thin liner just to protect it, so that'll be a thing. Um... In balloon news, I'm just waiting for some more parts to show up for the next balloon. I got the uh, SD card for the camera. It showed up today. The camera should show up eventually. Still haven't called about the tracker, but again, I can get that replaced, so will do. This is an odd little planet. This kind of reminds me of Uranus. And I need to um, make the frame for it. But that one will be, I don't know, eventually. But I'm, again, I'm, I'm going to test the... Uh, tracker extensively before using it because son of a bitch <laughs> the last balloon the rayon one balloon it's as far as i know still lying in a field somewhere uh godspeed balloon but again it was made to fall it was made to float it was made to be waterproof uh it will probably survive the winter i don't see why it wouldn't like unless a car ran over it but I would assume that if a car ran over it, uh, people would have, at least somebody would have stopped to check. So, <laughs> who knows? It's it's out there somewhere. All the data is probably still in it. Um, the radiation data logger was wrapped in, was in a bag, like a plastic bag. Assuming that bag didn't break, uh, it's still waterproof and just sitting there with all of its data waiting. That looks like a fun place to go there. 
the camera is inside of housing. It's never gonna like it can be underwater and it would be fine. That is quite the view. I like that. Uh, the next balloon will be more of a framework kind of shape. It won't actually be a, a, a container. Uh, but that's because I, I, I want to make it physically bigger without adding weight. So it's going to be kind of a pyramid shape um, with gold foil around it. So that, you know, it's, it's very, very obvious to see and very reflective. But at the same time, it is uh, lightweight. This is odd. How thick is this atmosphere? Atmospheric pressure. It doesn't have much of an atmosphere. It's just oddly rendering. Hmm. But yeah, so that's gonna happen soon. Oh, there we go. This looks more like it. Uh, odd formation in the wrong. I'll let them load. Come on, terrain, load. So yeah, got the suit working on. Got that working on. Um, the induction engine. Still working on that. The induction coil is sitting right there. I still need to get the power source for it and the actual engine unit itself. I need to. Uh, uh, I'm probably gonna have to have to have to have it CNC milled into two separate pieces. I was looking into uh, metal printing, but I don't think it would have the um, the physical characteristics that I need. So, yeah, I'm probably gonna have to do uh, CNC machining. Which is fine, it's just means it'll be two pieces. Meh. Um, this is a nice place, I kinda like it here. <clears throat> oh, my throat's getting scratchy. I, I, I need to have, I should have had tea, I didn't make tea, that's my problem. I live on tea. Don't drink coffee, so I drink tea. I used to drink, co I used to drink coffee back in the day, not anymore. Where are we going? Oh. Oh, we're going on the other side. I was about to say, it's like, wh where are you taking me, game? Boop. Oh, my. My. <laughs> uh, temperature. 20,040... Uh, 2,400... Or 2,043 degrees Celsius. Greenhouse effect. Does it have much of a greenhouse effect? What's the atmosphere looking like? 17 atmospheres. So it has a thick atmosphere comprised mostly of carbon dioxide, and it's right next to its star. Wow. Short end of the stick, indeed. Ooh, it has, it has a little asteroid friend. Oh, well, okay, it's less of an asteroid friend and more of a, uh, a molten blob friend. Eh, still. Oh man, I'm getting like um, sunshine flashbacks here, like looking down into the star. Oh man, that was a good movie. I actually enjoyed it. The uh, it has lots of friends. The um, last like act of it, like the last twenty minutes, got really weird, but still a good movie. I uh, recommend. What's this? Oh, it looks. Let's say more pleasant. Uh, temperature is still 460 degrees. So, not good. But not as bad as the other places. Has a bit of greenhouse effect. Has a thick atmosphere. Oh, faster than that, come on. Boop. Um, does that doesn't have atmosphere, okay. It's a very complex atmosphere. That's interesting, actually. But again, much more pleasant than the other ones. Look at that corona. Or actually, those more like uh, prominences? No. It's kind of like the corona. It's just a big, big old star. Big old star. Well, that was kind of fun. Where else do we want to go? I don't know. This video is actually 20 minutes we're up now. So you know what? I'll uh, look at that star, and we'll end it off there. 
thank you all for watching. Um, like the 60 of you who consistently watch, thank you, you guys are great. Uh, anyone else who shows up randomly because you like my voice or because you're lost or bored, I don't know, I appreciate you too. It's really weird, I have like 5,000 subscribers, but like 60 usual viewers. And it's like, I really shouldn't have 5,000 viewers or subscribers, I should really have like a hundred max, but mm, whatever. Um, a lot of those I got from the species videos, which I will be doing more of eventually, I promise. So, um, yeah, I never wanted to be famous, so this actually works out well for me. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed.